Hi, this is Nat with Webucator. In this video, I'll give you a tutorial on basic JavaScript form validation based on an online tutorial written by Duncan Crumbie and available at the URL shown here. Duncan agreed to let us create this tutorial as part of our free JavaScript solutions from the web course. First, we're going to learn how to restrict input to alphanumeric characters. This is useful for any form field in which you wouldn't want the user to enter a symbol. I'll show you how it works in the browser first and then we'll look at the code. You can see here we have a simple text field. If I enter my name and submit, you can see the form submits. I'll go back and I'll enter just my first name, submit. You can see it submits. The only difference was that we had a space in the first time we submitted it, but it worked. Now I'm going to enter nat100 and submit. That works too. So it takes letters and digits or alphanumeric characters. And it also takes spaces. But if we put a symbol in here and submit, you can see we get an error. Input contains invalid characters. Also, if we submit without putting anything in there at all, we get an error as well. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Here's the HTML form. You can see it's simple enough. The action is form-handler.html. Of course, normally you'd submit to a PHP page or some server-side coded page. We're just using form-handler.html as a placeholder. You can see when the form submitted, it calls check form this, and it returns it to the onSubmit handler. Within the form, we have two input fields. One is just our submit button, and the other is the text field, named input field, and that's the one we'll be validating. When we call check form, we send it this, and this refers to the whole form. It's the tag that this is in. Let's look at the check form function. You can see it takes one argument, form, and we're sending our form to it when we call it. Our first if condition just checks to make sure form.inputField.value does not equal an empty string. That's the value of the text field that's called input field in the form that we sent to the check form function. If it does equal an empty string, we alert error input is empty. Then we focus on that input field so that the user can easily enter something and we return false. That false is then returned to the form itself via the onSubmit handler. That causes the form not to submit. Let's take a look at line 18 here. This is a regular expression. Now regular expressions, if you don't know, are used for pattern matching. In this tutorial, we're not going to cover regular expressions. We do have an in-depth tutorial on regular expressions in JavaScript at the URL shown here. But for now, let me just show you how this one works. In JavaScript, just as a string is contained in quotation marks, a regular expression is contained by forward slashes. So this regular expression starts with a caret, which means that the pattern it's matching must start at this spot. It can't have any text before this spot. It ends with a dollar sign, which means it must end at that spot. In other words, there can be no trailing characters after the pattern is matched. Between the caret and the dollar sign, we have in square brackets a backslash w, which is a special symbol for all alphanumeric characters and underscores. That is followed by a space. So this set here of alphanumeric characters and underscores and spaces is then repeated one or more times. That's what the plus sign denotes. So here what we're saying is that this regular expression matches any alphanumeric character, underscore, or space repeated one or more times. We then have an if condition which checks to see if the input field value matches that regular expression. We do that through the test method of the regular expression. So what we're saying here is if the input field value does not match the regular expression we are going to alert this error. Error input contains invalid characters. We will then again focus on the input field so the user can easily correct the entry and will return false so that the form doesn't submit. Finally, after both conditions, we return true and that allows the form to submit. That only happens if we haven't yet returned false. In other words, if we haven't yet found an error. 
So now that we know how to check to make sure that the user entered data into a text field, let's learn how to check to see if a user entered the same password into two separate password fields. You often have to do this when registering for an account. So enter password. I'm going to enter foo. And I've made these text fields for now just for demo purposes. We'll change them to password fields soon so all we see is stars or dots. Repeat password bar. When I submit, I get an error, passwords don't match. Click OK. Change my second password to foo. Submit and the form submitted. Let's take a look at the code. Here are our two password fields. As you can see, type equals text right now for both. Let me change that real quickly. Password, and I'll copy and paste. Now they're both password fields, so all we'll see is stars when the user enters data. And we'll scroll up. And here we have the if condition. If form.password1.value is not equal to form.password2.value, then we alert the error. We then focus on the first password field and we return false. So if the two passwords are equal, meaning they match, then this code won't run and we will return true. Let me show you two issues that we have that I'd like to correct in the code. The first is that we can submit this without entering a password. So I write nat, I don't enter anything, and I submit, and it works. I would like the user to have to enter a password. The second issue I want to address is that when there are multiple problems, we only get one error. Here, we'll write foo and bar, and you'll have to trust me that I type two different values in there. And I've left the input field blank. When I submit this, I only get the one error, that the input is empty. I click OK. I enter that and submit again, and now I get the second error. I'd like to get both errors at the same time so I can correct everything before resubmitting. So let's look at the code to see how we fix both those issues. I'll take care of the password issue first. And I'll do that by changing this if condition into an if else if condition. So in the first part of the if condition, I want to make sure my password one field actually has some text in it. If it doesn't, if it equals an empty string, we'll do all this same code. Except our error won't be passwords don't match. It will be password is empty. Then we'll focus and we'll return false. That takes care of that part of the problem. This will force the user to enter a password. The second problem that we have is a little more complex. It's that we're checking one error at a time and as soon as we find one, we return false. What would be better is if we collected an array of errors and then returned false if there were any and alerted all of them so the user can fix them all at once. So the first thing we'll do is create an empty array and we'll call that array errors. Now each time we find an error we'll add an error message. So instead of alerting error input is empty we'll just push that message to our errors array and we don't need the error colon. Input is empty. In this case we're going to stop focusing on the elements and we'll stop returning false. We'll take the same code and paste it everywhere we find an error. In this case, input contains invalid characters. Here, password is empty. Again, we'll get rid of the focus and the returning false. And here, passwords don't match. Now there's one more step. We need to check the length of the errors array. And if it's greater than zero, we alert our message and we return false. If errors.length is greater than zero, we're going to create the message and then alert it. Now, we'd like to make the error message informative. We'll start with just errors. Backslash n, backslash n creates new lines. That's better. And then we'll loop through our array, adding each error message. We'll 
then we'll alert the message and then we'll return false let's see how it works we can just submit the form without entering any data here's our errors input is empty input contains invalid characters and password is empty that mostly works we'll address the issue in a second but before we do I want to show you what happens if you have different passwords foo and bar again submit in this case input is empty input contains invalid characters and passwords don't match really the input didn't contain invalid characters it didn't contain anything we can correct that by turning the first part of this into an if else, else if condition as well so let's take this regular expression definition and stick it up higher and then we'll take this and turn it into an else if so now we're first checking if the input field is an empty string and if it is we'll push the error input is empty if it's not we'll then check to see if it has invalid characters and if it does we'll push the error input contains invalid characters let's try that refresh submit input is empty password is empty okay now we'll put invalid characters into this just an add symbol should do it submit input contains invalid characters password is empty that looks like it's working okay that's all for this tutorial as Duncan points out in his tutorial you should always verify incoming form data with a secure server-side script as JavaScript can be disabled on the browser also be sure to check out Duncan's full tutorial as there are some tricks he shows that I did not cover here such as comparing numeric fields dealing with select elements and radio buttons handling checkbox arrays and combining form elements and conditions thanks I hope you enjoy trying some of these things out on your own